Hey guys, it is Tyler here back once again with another video. This time we're talking about Halo Infinite. I'm back to talk about some video games and wanting to for a while. What better way to do it? Halo Infinite is right around the corner. One of my favorite franchises of all time is returning and I want to talk about it. Well, at least this new campaign reveal or re-reveal, I guess, that came out last night. I watched it last night when it came out. I've just watched it again and now I want to talk about it. I haven't been paying a huge amount of attention with what's been going on with Halo Infinite or Halo because I've been quite disenfranchised with Halo since Halo 5 Guardians. Halo 5 pretty much ruined my love for Halo. I think many people that know me know that. Probably my most hated game of all time. I felt like the story was completely trash. Gameplay, trash. Campaign, trash. And just... Oh, we don't even get into it. Let's talk about Halo Infinite and what that potentially could do to right the wrongs of Halo 5 Guardians, correct the ship in the right trajectory. And what I want to talk about is this campaign re-reveal and sort of break down my thoughts on it. The things I liked, the things I didn't like, because there's a bit of both. It's a double-edged sword right now. Uh, the first thing that this campaign trailer sort of showed off was the art style, was the music. This trailer was trying its damnedest to make us feel like we are witnessing classic Halo right now. And I don't fully buy it just yet. Yes, the art style was there. You had Cortana giving the narration to the trailer. You had the classic Halo music going. And it was making you feel like, oh yeah, here we are, we're back in this world. It's kept trying to refer to you as, Halo's always been this, Halo's always been that. It's Chief and Cortana, it's this, that, and the other. And it's like, yeah, we've always known that. Why the fuck didn't you guys know that? Why do you have to tell us now, all these years after, you've been screwing up the franchise? It just made me laugh at first of them telling us what Halo is when it's us that has been telling them for years what Halo is and finally they're catching up. But here's the thing, I don't know if they've quite got it. Yes, you have the what was revealed to be the weapon, which is this new AI that Chief needs to go collect on Zeta Halo, which is where this Halo game at least primarily is going to be taking place, if not the entire campaign will be taking place. And as far as we're aware, we have no re reference to any other locations other than I'm sure Infinity, the actual ship itself, but that vessel's probably going to be orbiting the Zeta Halo as well. So what we do know is, in that first mission, Chief goes and collects this new AI, aka the weapon, aka Cortana 2, Beta Cortana, I don't know what to think. But we have this secondary Cortana whose mission is to find Cortana, or at least lock down Cortana when she is found. And that's what Chief's main mission is, by the looks of it, in this Halo game. And what sort of confused me about this story and what kind of concerns me is, yes, Halo 5 was a narrative disaster. No one's arguing with that. What I don't want them to do is pretend it didn't happen. You need to fix it by addressing the issues within Halo 5 directly. As in... Yes, they happened. We can't ignore it. We can't pretend. I certainly can't pretend they didn't happen. Face it on. Deal with it. R resolve those issues. And then move forward. At last we saw at the end of Halo 5 Guardians, Cortana had gathered all the Guardians, all the Prometheans, the machines, the created, to take on the mantle of responsibility that the Forerunners once had. The, the mantle of responsibility being this reference to the superior species that needs to safeguard the galaxy, the, un the known universe, and all living things. And they caretake it, they look after it, they almost control it in a way. They're the kings of, of everything. And there were certain forerunners that believed the humans were next, the librarian being one of them. But then you've got Cortana, who of course is gone crazy, and had been isolated at the end of Halo 4, and had died, I guess. And her remains had then gathered all of those created, those guardians, those Prometheans, those machines, to take over, to take on, to be those that can't die, essentially, to take on that mental responsibility, to police everyone. And that's where Hitler 5 leaves off. They arrive on Earth to take over, to police, to control all. What happened to that? There's no reference to that, and there has not been a reference to that in any of the Halo Infinite informational trailers that was a major event what the guardians just went home cortana's just like now nah, we're done with that we do see cortana in this trailer looking around planning stuff but what's she doing we don't know we're just on this halo ring we're forgetting that everyone is being policed by machines is that what's happened 
I'm worried that we're ignoring the end of Halo 5 and forgetting about it because it's so trash and just moving on with a different story. Obviously, they've got to address it, but I think they need to address it in a bigger way because that was a major event that we've got to deal with. We have to deal with that major event. What happened? Yes, Cortana's going to be in this. Yes, I'm sure, but I feel like they're just going to sort of brush it under the rug and be like, yeah, but it's about Zeta Halo. It's about the Banished, and Cortana's just trying to figure shit out, and you've got to sort of save her. The mission that they explain that we see is this sort of second Cortana and Chief are going to go find original Cortana and decommission her. I'm sure Chief has his own plans. He wants to save Cortana as best he can because, of course, they have their incredibly strong bond and relationship. And that's going to be interesting to see. Don't get it twisted. I am very intrigued with the storyline and certainly this looks better dealing with a Halo ring, dealing with the Banished. We change. We've just changed cameras from here to here. That's because this camera keeps screwing up. And this is about the fifth time I've tried to record this video. So we're just going to go ahead and continue on, on this camera here. As I was saying, the Banished are an interesting enemy to take on. Definitely menacing, definitely intimidating. And I'm looking forward to seeing how we deal with them. And they show some different enemy types that we're going to see. Those, sort of, those Spartan hunters, they look very cool. I love all that stuff. All the story teasers I was enjoying. I was really enjoying the Chief stuff, this sort of new Cortana that's a bit clueless, a bit innocent, but at the same time sort of seemed like much more following the Chief's lead. Hey, what do you think we should do? What do you think we should do? Uh, whereas I feel like our original Cortana was a lot more, we're equals here. Whereas this was more of a serving AI. So I'm interested to see how that relationship dynamic works, how Chief treats this new AI, whether he sort of succumbs to the fact that it looks and sounds like Cortana and okay, I'm going to treat it like Cortana. Or will Chief re be resentful? That whole dynamic is going to be interesting throughout the game and I'm looking forward to seeing that. We do see a hint of a either a forerunner or a f once forerunner now Promethean that has its own threat, hopefully can do what the Didact didn't, which is actually be some sort of menacing enemy with a big payoff. Hopefully we don't have to battle it 7,000 times like Halo 5 Guardians and it can just be a one-off, but I'm looking forward to seeing more of the forerunner stuff because that's the stuff that's always really intrigued me about Halo and that's the stuff I want to see pay off properly because they really fucked that up with Halo 5. And I want to know, you know, a lot of the forerunners hated the humans and, and few of them thought they were the future. That's that librarian versus didact conflict. So all of those story elements I'm excited about. I'm keen for. I'm looking forward to it. What worries me is the gameplay. Now, don't get it, don't get it twisted. Sound design, fantastic. Something 343 have actually been phenomenal at is their sound design. And even I've always enjoyed the scores they've done. I'm though very excited they're bringing back original art style and some of the original scores from the original trilogy of Halo. But all that stuff is good. What concerns me is the gameplay mechanics and how that campaign, the campaign is going to actually play. Because again, they were showing off, like they did in 2020, this open world landscape, this sort of bandit camp type objective, run and grab, run and kill, you know, check a box to complete a task type thing. And that's not something Halo's ever done, it's not something Halo ever needs. And I'm concerned that it's going to be over bloated and really take away and separate those memorable moments in the storyline, whether they be m memorable dialogue moments, memorable action moments, or set pieces most especially, because something I've always loved about the old Halo games was each mission in the campaign was so distinct, not just by its set piece, but also the mechanics of the gameplay, whether it was a stealth mission, whether it was an on-the-ground run and gun, snatch and grab, a vehicle mission, whether that be in the air, on the ground, in a tank, warthog, you could really distinguish what that mission structure and style is going to be. And what worries me about this open world is I'm sort of going to play one way and that's how I'm going to spend the entire time I play this campaign. And it's just going to be how it is and I'm, it's not going to be able to be forcefully differentiated to you. It's like, here's the freedom player you want. And sometimes that's good, but a lot of times in a, in a game like Halo, I'd argue that's bad. What you do in a first-person shooter is you create 
the environment for the player. You create the set piece and you create the environment and the structure of which we need to play to. Because here's the situation, how are you going to tackle it? If I'm someone that, well, I'm just like jumping in a walk and shooting shit. And if you allow me to do that the whole time, sure, it's player choice, but it's not really fleshing out the full scope of what the game can be. You're just throwing enemies in a place and I can go around and do whatever I want. It bloats the game. It it separates the story and the flow. And it's not really built for first-person shooters, I would argue. Especially a Halo. I'm not looking forward to that. I'm very concerned about it. And I worry that it's going to actually take away from the main campaign. As in, are we going to get less missions? Are we going to get less separate sort of set pieces is the whole campaign in this open world then you just sort of go between areas and that's where your mission sort of start from there and the environment and landscape's going to look pretty much the same and the structure's going to be pretty much the same that's concerning I don't know yes script wise how the narrative and plot's looking I'm intrigued I'm interested enemies major characters story points and the way it's going to flow through I'm all excited about that I'm actually on board with that but this Halo game, ladies and gentlemen, to me is do or die. Halo 5 fucked things up so bad. Halo 4 was passable. I give Halo 4 a pass mark. I thought it was good. I liked it. But I was then like, okay, but where are we going? I don't really know what we're setting up here. You just pass this. I give you a pass. 343. Three. Your first Halo. Original. And then you come out with Halo 5 and couldn't imagine anything worse. And now it looks like you're trying to sweep that under the rug, sort of push it to the side, try to fix it and tell us, guys, we know what Halo is. This is what this whole trailer is doing. Halo is this. Halo has always been that. Oh, you're telling me what Halo is? And you released Halo 5 Guardians? Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for telling me what Halo is. When I would argue, this trailer showed that you still don't know what Halo is. You know some points because we've fucking been screaming them at you. But then you're like, okay, but if we give you that, then we're going to take something else away from you, like basic mission structure. Uh, and we're going to make it an open world. That's what you're doing. You're giving us one thing back and then taking another thing away. Now, of course, I could be wrong. You could have a very strict mission structure that's very diverse, with a lot of range and a lot of depth, and, a, and even a decent length to it. It doesn't have to be super long, but, you know, a decent length to it. Or, I could be right, they have overbloated the game with banished camps that we're going to spend all our time blowing things up to get different weapons or upgrades just to go and do missions and it's the same old, same old. I'm still concerned. They haven't won my trust back yet, certainly, from trailers. And it doesn't look like it's changed all that much. Since their initial reveal, all they've learned how to do is market it better. Hey, don't show us the one part of the campaign you know we're going to hate. Show us the stuff we want. The story, the characters. You know? The art, the music. The action. The dialogue moments. The character moments between each other. And they did show that. And I'm excited about that. I'm interested in it. Time will tell. What is it? December 8th. Halo Infinite releases. The question is... Am I right or am I wrong? I have my complete doubts in 343. Halo 5 did that and I refuse to trust again. It broke my heart. But I will play it. I will see what happens. And it's do or die. And it can't be passable again. It can't be Halo 4. It, this... This campaign has to fuck us so hard. Ah, uh, so fucking hard it has to fuck. It has to be so top tier for you to salvage what you did in that last game. And it doesn't mean it has to be a Halo 3 level. There's no way you can be Halo 3. Because Halo 3 was built towards and picked. You can't just go from to this. But you need to fucking fix that shit and drag it back up. It's a tall task. But it's what you did to yourself, 343, and it's what you have to do. So December 8th, we'll see. Halo Infinite, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know, what did you think of this campaign re-reveal? Are you going to be buying Halo Infinite? 
and what are your thoughts on this trailer. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll certainly be talking a lot more about Halo Infinite in the coming weeks and months. I'll do a review of it, I'll play it, I'll play it with the pillars, we'll do some videos on it, we'll be covering it. You'll know my thoughts. So stay tuned to this channel, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.